Orlando is a nice place. I like Orlando. I got no issues with the city of Orlando. Very, very nice, right? But there's one small issue. If you're trying to invest in real estate, you're trying to buy rental properties for cash flow, and you're in Orlando, and it's 2022, you are probably dealing with a huge inventory crisis. There is probably not a lot of properties in and around Orlando that are going to hit your cash flow goals, provide you enough cash flow to live off of, or be affordable to even put the deal together, right? Yeah, we dig Orlando, we dig the sunshine, we dig Disney, we dig the magic, we dig it all, man. We dig it all. But if the numbers don't make sense, the numbers don't make sense. So what do we do? We look to better cash flow markets, and I'm here to help you do just that. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and today I have the privilege of talking about a Florida man. Talking about a Florida man, but it's not like a news article where it's like, Florida man got high on bath salts and ate another human being. Florida man whose realtor is a serial killer, right? We don't have to say some crazy Florida man stuff today, right? No, no, no. Today's just good news about a Florida man, okay? Seriously, what are y'all doing down there, man? What are y'all doing? Let's... We should talk about this later. Seriously. By the way, DeSantos, 2024. What? President of the United States? That'd be crazy. Back to the show. We are talking about real estate. Come on. Let's go, Brandon. I can't stop. Oh, my God. Anyway, folks, I like Orlando. It's a great place. But as I have beaten down thus far, it's pretty expensive and it's tough, right? It's tough to be a cash flow investor, right? I believe that you should live where you want. Orlando, great place. Santos. Anyway, not, it's nice. Orlando is nice. You should live where you want, but you should invest where the numbers make sense. As nice as Orlando is, I don't believe that it makes a lot of sense for a lot of real estate investors out there who are trying to make money as rental property owners. One of those investors is my guy, Brian. Brian feels the same way I do about the cash flow doesn't have any interest in moving out of orlando why would you it's a great place right but if if it's a square peg and you got a round hole it ain't gonna work folks so instead brian has tasked me to build him a portfolio of rental properties that he could passively own my team will manage them, and guess what? They're going to be cheaper than the properties in Orlando, number one. Number two, they're going to kick off more cash flow than the properties in Orlando. And Brian, based on everything we've been doing thus far, I think the triplex that I've, uh, or I'm sorry, the duplex that I've got for you today, I was thinking triplex because the whole thing with this duplex, why I like it so much, is it's got three beds in each unit versus two beds, so I had the three in my brain. That is a, a big thing in this market that we're going to be talking about. That, that's like huge. And we're going to talk about that at length right after this. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's going to be genius granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back, folks. Let's pull up the numbers, man. This is what matters, right? This is the property. Looks kind of quirky. It's a two-family home, up, down. What I love about this, what I love about this, and we'll get to the numbers because the numbers are what really matters, but what I really love here, and it directly correlates with the numbers, is the fact that this is a 3-1-3-1, okay? Normally, in this market, we're dealing with two ones, two ones, right? Two beds, one bath, each unit. This one is a three bath, one unit, and that's going to allow us some serious money, 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 right? Here's what we have. Look at that rent roll right there. 775 and 900, right? 1675 comes in, right? $20,100, which, by the way, as you see the address, it's three four, uh, 316 4th Street, Illyria, right? Here's the thing. 
Elyria, as well as a large other portion of the Cleveland area, mostly has two ones, okay? Most duplexes have a total of four beds in two baths, and we're seeing seven fifty in rent. This thing is special because you have those extra two bedrooms. Now, I will say this. I think 900 is honestly a little optimistic, right? I feel like it's hard to regularly get that much rent, even though there's three beds. But I also feel like 775 is honestly kind of low, right? So in reality, I would say 850, I think, is the sweet spot, right? I think they rented the one unit for a little bit less than they should have. They rented the other unit for a little bit more than is reasonable to expect all the time, right? So I would say 850. 850, right, which would be 1700 a month is what we will normally expect, right? But we'll go ahead and just run the numbers here based on what they have because it's very close to the 17, which I'd project for the long haul, right? They got 1675 coming in. So let's just roll with that. But again, I don't anticipate getting 900 very often, but I also anticipate going above 775, right? So of the 1675 that comes in, I anticipate us spending approximately eight and a quarter, leaving a pure NOI of 849.25 or a yearly net return of 10,191, right? As far as what the unit looks like itself, it's nothing like amazing, right? We have just like hardwoods throughout, okay? Pretty simple stuff. It's kind of a dated kitchen. Honestly, at the next turnover, we'd probably want to update this a little bit so we can make sure we get that 850 easily. It, it kind of goes back to the what's the deal uh, with that $900 tenant, right? Like, why are they paying $900? Why are they paying $900? Uh, for a dated unit, right? As you can see, these are all the photos they took prior to the tenants moving in, folks. It is fully occupied by those two. When you see a tenant paying a little bit above market rate, right? Like I could understand why the one tenant pays 775, right? Market rate's 850, but it's a little dated. Okay, that makes sense, right? But why is this other tenant paying more, right? They're paying 900 for a market rate unit that's about 850 and it's a little dated. What's going on there? What you have to understand is you could usually get any tenant to pay any amount, honestly. Like you can get people to pay above market rate okay but what that usually means is there's an issue right if they're a good solid tenant there's a bunch of market rate apartments they have to choose from if you're getting above market rate from that tenant you might only be renting to that tenant because they don't have the ability to rent another place right that could be someone with something in their background right they can't get approved at other places so you should be a little leery when in a, a seller selling you a property with above market rate tenants in there and it's dated, right? Like, okay, if this was just like the most badass, like dope looking unit and they were getting an extra 50 spot out of that tenant, sweet. Uh, but it's not, it's dated, right? So just remember that little thing of caution. All that said, though, I don't think it's a bad deal. I still think we should move forward with it. They're asking 120. I think we should try to pick it up at 115, knowing that we may or may not have a problem tenant. But here's the thing. It's three beds, one bath in each unit in a solid high C, low B grade neighborhood, right? Elyria, honestly, I like investing in Elyria more than the actual city of Cleveland at this point because I feel like uh, the city in Elyria is much easier to deal with. We don't have the new lead-based paint regulations rolling out in Elyria like we do in Cleveland. So I really dig Elyria, but I just want you to have eyes wide open understanding that one tenant could potentially be an issue. But it's still, in my opinion, worth that risk to try to pick it up at 115 because of the fact that you get those 3-1 units, right? There is not a lot of 3-1 units out there in this market. Probably 98% of the duplexes I sell here in the Cleveland market are going to be two ones, right? So that third one, that's a nice premium. And we're not really paying much of a premium on top of uh, what we pay for a normal two one, right? Usually we're paying about 100K for those, right? So we're only paying a 15K premium. So even with that tenant in the dated units, not a big deal. I still think it makes most sense, right? And if we finance it, you only put down 28,750. The bank kicks in 86,250. That should project out at a 20.2% cash on cash return. And of course, my team will handle everything. We will handle the property management. We will handle the maintenance. If that $900 tenant turns out to be a problem, we will be the people evicting him. We will be the people updating the unit after we evict that tenant. 
getting you new tenants, rocking and rolling. This thing is a long-term cash cow, solid neighborhood. Love the extra bedrooms. I think we got to move on this one and move on it quickly. My suggested price is $115. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.